welcome to another RSR tonight I'm reviewing Paraguay 1 Brazil 4 in the CONMEBOL Copa America 2024 Group D Paraguay 1 Brazil 4 in la CONMEBOL Copa America Grupo D Paraguay played well for the first 35 minutes defended very well gave up a handball penalty in the first 30 minutes Paqueta missed it horribly but in the 35th minute, Brazil scores, and from then on, the game was pretty much over. They made very bad defensive mistakes late in the first half that led to two of the three goals at the half. Paraguay did, and it was a crazy switch from where they were the first 30 minutes of the game. They started to absolutely collapse after giving up that pen, but especially after giving up the goal to Vinicius Jr., which was a beautiful play. Goals were scored as follows. In the 35th minute, Vinicius Jr. scores. Ball. Vinicius runs down the wing, cuts in, plays the ball to Paqueta. Paqueta plays it on to Vinicius as he's running into the box. He takes an angle to where it's hard to be saving that ball. He puts it past the hands of the keeper. Rolls it past him to make it nil one. Set a uno in the 35th minute. Beautiful goal by Vinicius Jr. They need goals like that from him if they want to win in this tournament. His fourth with the Celesal. And it wouldn't be his only one of the night. But in the 43rd minute, Savio scores a goal. Ball's cleared away. Saved by the keeper, falls to defender, it barely gets cleared, falls to Savio, he slots it home, nil two, Cerrados in the 43rd minute, good goal. First of the defensive mistakes for Paraguay, another happens in the 45th plus 4th minute. A defender has the ball, passes it straight to Vinicius' feet as he's on rushing the ball, he slots it home, you can't do that, it's going to end badly, 3 nil, Cerrados. Nil three, set with tres, right before halftime. Halftime is called as soon as that's done, right after kickoff, after that play. Nil three, set with tres, miro tiempo. I mean, Brazil, those last 15 minutes, what that was theirs. That was theirs. That was the game in a nutshell. Brazil finally broke out. They were a team that finally showed that they're not the Samba football Brazil they used to be. They're not even the tiki-taka Brazil they used to be. But when their players, their high-quality players, are playing at the highest level and playing at the best level possible, they are going to win football matches. And Badawai is not a great team. But for the first 30 minutes, you're like, is Brazil going to do this again and draw a team they shouldn't be and basically end their Copa chances right here, right now? It was like, wow. But then Brazil started to finally meet the moment. The missed penalty by Paqueta was a horrible penalty. I think he wanted to go to the left. But the keeper basically said, hey, I know you're going to the left. He panics, goes to the right, absolutely shanks the damn thing. Laces out Finkel. But then Vinicius scores, and he does get an assist. Paqueta gets an assist on that play. And you're sitting there and you're like, okay, that's a good way to start running during the match. Start scoring. And then Savio scores 12 or 8 minutes later. Vinicius scores more than 10 minutes later, about 15. And you're like, okay, that's 3-0. You're sitting there like, yeah, this game's done. Brazil dominated for once for the first time in God knows how long. Vinicius with his fourth and fifth goals for the CLSL in this match, and you need him to have performances like that if you want to win this tournament. And he, he, he stepped up. He stepped up for sure. He had to and he did. Amazing. Second half, 48th minute, Omar Aldrete scores a banger. Takes a shot, says, might as well if I want my team to have a chance to win this game. Gets a pass a Lisson. And it's one to three, uno a tres in the 48th minute. A golazo for Paraguay. Beautiful goal. Just takes it and says, screw it. Must, must shoot. That's the type of thing I want to see. And he got it. But in the 65th minute, another handball foul by Paraguay. Leads to another penalty given. They send up Paqueta for redemption. And this time he slots it. Keeper goes to the opposite side. He slots it home as easy as you like. 
He did even a little bit of a shower celebration before his little dance because he knew it. One to four, uno a cuatro. Good penalty by Paqueta. A very good redemption moment for him. And it's one to four on the night. Uno a cuatro esta noche. Good game for Brazil. Stats are as follows. 15 shots to 17. Six shots on goal to six. 45% possession to 55% possession. 392 passes to 475. 85% pass actually to 85. 12 fouls to 13. One offside to zero. Two yellow cards to three. One red card to zero. Four corners to six. For me, when I watched this game, I watched Brazil show that they're not dead yet. That riding the obituary for the Celestial was not the right play after their last game against Costa Rica. You are not to write the Celestial's obituary. Not right now. And they will most likely advance, even with a loss against Colombia, unless they get curb stomped and somehow Costa Rica goes and curb stomps Paraguay. They should be advancing. This should make them advance. With how much they won by the goal differential and the fact that Paraguay nicely scored a goal, so their goal scored would be four instead of three because Costa Rica, if they win 3-0 and Colombia wins 3-0, that would still not be enough on goals scored to put Costa Rica above Brazil. So actually, Paraguay did Brazil a solid, to be honest, with the handball as well. They did them a solid, ironically enough. So honestly, if you're Brazilian and they get through and Costa Rica sort of make it too close for comfort, you get your ass kicked by Colombia, which is possible, at least that you're part of it, you should thank Paraguay because, well, they might have just saved your ass scoring that extra goal and then giving you the handball to, you know, give you the plus three goal differential and then the 4-1 win. I mean, that was two stupid handballs in one game. I mean, come on. But could have been 5 1 too, which then it wouldn't have mattered. But, you know, Pakita had to miss the first penalty. He got he had to get let the keeper in his head. But again, Brazil did what they were supposed to do. They did what they were supposed to do tonight. It was like, yeah, you better beat. You better beat. Better beat. Paraguay. And they did. It wasn't the prettiest at times, but they broke through, got the goals they needed. Vinicius Jr. put the team on his back. Samu showed his Girona form. Paqueta scored a penalty and got an assist to sort of whitewash the performance from the missed penalty. And all's well that ends well, to be totally honest. All's well that ends well for Brazil, the Celestial. All's well that ends well. But was it the most perfect? No. I wouldn't call it that. Paraguay's a crap team, pretty much. They got stomped out by Colombia. They got stomped out by Brazil. And I wouldn't be shocked if Costa Rica goes and says, you know what, might as well get a, get in on the fun. Stomp them out. And wouldn't shock me. But, again, I look at a team like Brazil, and I expect more. They have world-class players. On a lot of positions, they have world-class players or players who can be world-class on their day. And the fact that they don't play to that sort of situation, to that sort of level sometimes, really does my head in. And Dorival is not a great manager. To me, the way he runs the game is high-end talent decides how it goes. It's basically Pittsburgh Steelers football. You know, it's like Pittsburgh Steeler football. <laughs> you know, it's like Mike Tomlin. He lets, he lets the high-end talent either burn him or help him win. So, yeah, 50% of the time you're going to win. 50 or not. I guess that's better than being crap. But, you know, I guess it is. But, you know, Dorival in Portuguese right now is saying, we do not care. We do not care. In Portuguese, of course. Because, honestly, he probably doesn't. They won. They're probably through unless some otherworldly shit goes and happens on Tuesday. They're through. And they're going to play the winner of Group C in the quarters and go from there. As long as you're in the dance, you're in the dance. And 
who knows how to dance better than Brazil? Nobody. Nobody. So, you know, as long as you're in that dance, and technically the tournament is the dance, but the knockout stage is the real dance. That separates the men from the boys, the doers from the waiters. You know what I'm saying? So, if anybody can dance, it's Brazil when it's time to dance. So, as you can see tonight. So, with that being said, they did well. Man of the match for me, Vinicius Jr. He deserves it. Two goals. Ups his tally to five for the Celestial. He still needs to score more, but it's a good start. With that being said, congratulations to Brazil on the win. Congratulations to Colombia on advancing through the group stage, not having to worry about Sunday. or Not Sunday, because that's Group B, but Tuesday. Tuesday. They have to play Brazil, but I will cover that one because that's a bigger game. But they don't have to worry, and Brazil's really got the pressure on them here. We'll see how that goes, if there is any pressure there. But congratulations on Colombia advancing. Felicidades. Commiserations to Paraguay. They're eliminated from this tournament with zero points. Costa Rica still has a chance to get second place. So... With that being said, we have 14 teams alive going into match day three, which starts tomorrow night. Canada facing their Waterloo against Chile and Argentina hoping to get through with seven or nine points. But they're through. It's just how much points gets them through. And Canada's facing the Waterloo tomorrow. With that being said... Match round three is going to be a tasty one. There are three first place spots or advanced spots locked up. Otherwise, all but moving on. So really, it's out of those 14 teams, it's 10 teams fighting for second place spots. Really. Now, of course, there are some teams that are all but out anyway. But for now... Exactly. With that being said, though, there it is. There's the table set. We're moving on to the final day of group stage games for each group starting tomorrow going through Tuesday. The table is set, and the knockout stage is the round of 16 for the Euros. Start tomorrow as well going through Tuesday. The table is set. What that means is tomorrow I will be live in the morning, 11 in the morning, for Switzerland versus Italy, and we will review that match. Then, at 7 p.m., 6.30, I will be live for Toronto. Atlanta versus Toronto during a double stream with Chile, Canada, Chile. Double review as well. Then, Sunday, I'll be live for Mexico versus Ecuador with a review. Monday, USA versus Uruguay live, RSR. Sunday, or... Tuesday, damn, it's weird to have some end on Tuesday. Tuesday, Brazil, Colombia, live RSR. That's how it looks. So, two streams tomorrow over three games and two reviews tomorrow over three games. One and one. One live, one review for the rest of the time. The table is set. We're ready to go. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Once subscribe. Send some chats on the live streams. Comment on this video. Put us to play. The share friends and family. All that great stuff. I will see you in the morning. And I'm going to have to get my work done pretty quickly. Getting this up. Getting the streams going and all that. But there you go. I see you tomorrow morning. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace. Forza Zuri. Andiamo Canada. Let's go Toronto. And congratulations, Brazil, Colombia, and Costa Rica, you're still alive. But the table's set. Let's go. Peace.